This cooling pad is the most powerful laptop cooler I've ever tested by a tire life, and it is AI powered, basically allowing for the cooler to adapt based on temperature readings of your laptop. Yes, this has software support where adjustments to fan speed can be set and also RGB settings. It has its own 36 watt power source and stands as a USB hub as well. Ilano sent over their V12 Ultra cooling pad for us to do our tests on, and we will be exploring fit and temps with my 15.6 inch laptop. Then we will be testing this out and see how much temp drops we get from using this cooling pad when gaming, of course. This cooling pad is not the average cooling pad as this not only has RGB for aesthetics but it also has a touchpad for more cooling pad controls and a scroll wheel for fan RPM. Fan RPM is rated from 300 to 2800 powered by a 36 watt external power brick. So this doesn't pull power from your laptop as it has its own power source. This also has a USB hub by the right side of the cooler, so you get three extra USB 3 outputs. Before we proceed, hi, I'm Daniel with the Bibo Heronero team. We've been reviewing audio gear, keyboards, mice, and we are currently expanding our range of products that we feature on our channel. Subscribes are always updated with our new videos. Anyways, Underneath the cooler are a lot more features such as kick up feet and replaceable foam to keep the fan clean. Other cooling pads are just dust magnets and aren't advisable long term. The cooler is chunky but it isn't that heavy. Let's go over build quality in more detail in the next segment. Inside the box you get the cooler itself, the power brick with an attached barrel cable, a USB-C cable, documentation, and an extra foam. The USB-C cable is what I believe is a USB 3 cable given that the USB male plug has a blue marker on it. The power brick is really hefty and it outputs a maximum of 36 watts which is a lot of power for just a laptop cooler. The documentation is easy to read with instructions on how to first set up your cooler. I do highly advise that you keep your manual for reference on controls and more information on features of your cooler. Going over the cooler, it's chunky and regardless of that it's surprisingly not super heavy you have a layer of foam that's more than one centimeter thick to create seal for your laptop the quality of the foam is really super high and it is memory foam as when you press on the foam it slowly goes back up to its original shape near the front of the cooler you get stoppers so your laptop doesn't slide down then on the controls of the cooler you get this scroll wheel that's pretty much similar to a mouse scroll wheel in feel rolling it up and down you also get the touchpad for power, light modes, and RGB light color by the LCD screen. Looking at the sides, you get RGB strips which make it a lot more gamer inspired. On the top side of the keyboard, you get a honeycomb looking mark on it that kind of resembles that of the Alienware laptops. Then at the right side of the cooler, you get the barrel input for power, USB-C input for data, and USB 3 outputs. I do have one complaint about this feature because most mouse users are right-handed. Even left-handed people use mouse on the right side most of the time. Having USB 3 outputs positioned by the right side of the cooler may potentially cause the cables to clash with your mouse. Maybe in the next refresh of this cooler, Ilano could move it to the other side. Or maybe at the back. Now looking underneath, you get kick-up feet similar to those of the keyboards, but with a twist. The kick-up feet has kick-up feet, basically allowing you to choose from three different angles to use this cooler. Moving on, you see that the fan underneath has a plastic cover that is removable. Then you have foam in there which you can replace with extra foam given in the box. I suggest you get yourself a gentle brush to clean this, maybe twice a month. For as long as the foam is intact, don't throw it away. So we have the software here of the Ilano V12 Ultra. You have the on and off switch here and the hardware status right here including CPU percentage and CPU temps. You also have the same metrics for GPU but right now my GPU is not turned on because I'm not playing any games. Moving on you have the RPM modes here. You have a manual mode so you could choose the RPM speed so you could choose how strong the fans are and you also have a custom setting here that you could toggle. Well let, let me just turn that off. It's a little too strong. And then you have here the AI low mode medium and high. What it's basically going to do is it's going to adapt based on your CPU and GPU temperatures. The higher they go, the stronger they get. Again, there are three modes, low, medium, and high. Then you have RGB controls right here, which is pretty straightforward. You have the RGB modes right there and the brightness settings including speed. In our tests, I use a Dell G3 with an old but gold GTX 1650 with an i5 9300H. Intel's 9th gen laptop chips are notorious for overheating. So this to me was a good test subject. 
By the way, my tests were done at room temperatures of about 27 degrees Celsius. After 20 minutes of playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey with high graphics and some textures in Ultra, my GPU temps are averaging around 80 degrees Celsius with very low GPU utilization of only 70% average due to the heat buildup. Frame rates dip down to 20 FPS and jitters cause it to be unpleasantly playable. But you just know the laptop is stressing out. Now, with a cooler underneath at only 300 RPM, I'm already seeing improvements in temperatures and frame rates where the frames have stabilized and frame drops have decreased. At half power, 1400 RPM, the laptop now functions with very good temperatures and frame rate. You even get better GPU utilization, averaging above 90% with no noticeable jitters from frame drops. At 2800 RPM, however, I think this is overkill and should only be used in situations where you probably have an RTX card on your laptop running games on Ultra. Too bad my ROG with an RTX card is mounted on a stand, which makes it super hard to disconnect. There are some drawbacks to this as maxing out the fans can get pretty noisy. Check this out. So here's the AC Odyssey tests we've been doing with the frame rates over there. And I have this on maximum at 2,800 RPM. And if you listen to it, it's really very loud. It's like you have a mini vacuum cleaner running in the background, but I have IEMs on, so I don't hear it as much. But if you have, say, open back headsets, then this may be a little bit bothering. Next, as I already mentioned, the right-sided USB inputs may clash with your mouse, but I'm glad I have my laptop mounted. Anyhow, this is hands down the most powerful, most effective cooling pad I've ever tested. Not only do you get better gaming performance, but you increase the lifespan of your PC by assisting it in terms of heat management. For now, there is no cooling pad that can compare, though I'm open to your suggestions on what cooling pad we should review next. I will leave links down in the description below on where to get your Elano cooling pad. I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.